in this video, we're gonna take a look at a Killer Joe backing track that I've put together. It did take me a little while to do this, put the bass and drums together and get the arrangement and the solo choruses. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the sheet music that I created for this particular backing track. And of course, Killer Joe is a famous composition by Benny Golson. It's important to learn this tune because it has a nice feel. It's something that is fun to play and certainly something that people recognize. So let's take a look at the sheet music now. Right off the bat, the first four bars is you've got this walking bass line where it's going. And it just continues on throughout the first eight bars and even into the head. Now, when it gets to the second four bars, the two chords are basically a C9 and a B flat 13. That means a C7 with an added ninth and a B flat seven with an added nine and 13. So if we were to do a two five one of F, it would be G minor to C7, F major seven. So instead of playing that whole thing, you're just gonna play the second chord. So where the G minor seventh falls to become the third of the next chord. And then you're just gonna duplicate that for B flat. So those two chords. And then on top, you're gonna play the same C, G, and C. Now I think what's important about that is that you get the feel correctly. You basically have to hold those notes with the pedal down and then take the pedal up when you hit the eighth note. So again, the pedal goes down for the dotted quarter note and then comes up for the eighth note. And that's what gives it that swing feel. And then when we get into the head, you're not gonna play that right hand chord, which is the C, G, and C. I'm not gonna do that. We're just gonna play the left hand voicings. And along with that, play the melody. Now it's gonna get a little bit tricky to feel this. I would suggest that the pedal goes down here and comes up here and then play this with the pedal down again here and then carry that through and then up on this and back down, okay? I think the thing that makes it a little bit tricky is to hold on that note when the left hand is playing here. You can definitely hold that longer than a half note. I would definitely stretch it through to the end of the bar in both of these situations. Now it's up to you whether you wanna play these last two shots in the right hand or just play the left hand. And then when we get into the bridge, you're gonna find that some of these chords are a little bit complicated. Interestingly enough, this first chord is the same as the C9 chord we played earlier. It's just got the root and the third in the bass as a 10th, so it makes a nice chord. And then when it switches to the A7 sharp nine, sharp five chord, here's the sharp nine, and the sharp five is the F. So when you have in the melody note, the G natural, you kind of have to figure out how to make that chord work. So it works in a cluster like this. So root and seventh in the left hand, and this cluster in the right hand. And this is kind of like force, I would say, voicing in force. And in the right hand, you've got this E flat minor seven cluster. And then it switches to E flat minor seventh over A flat. And then to A flat seven. So it's going from here just the top two notes move. 
and then to the A13 chord. So switching up a half step. So from here to half step up and then E flat seven over A flat again. So a little bit different voicing there. You got an A flat seven in the left hand. And then to A flat seven with a flat nine. So the flat nine being the A natural. So you've got the third and the seventh in the left hand. And then the seventh flat nine and then fifth on top. And then this chord here, the E minor seven, this is all in fourths. There's a third in the middle, the rest is fourths. And then this really cool, what I would say is an F major seventh over an A seven, to think of it like that. So there's your F major seventh, and then the A seven on the left hand. So then the whole bridge goes like this. Some really cool chords happening there. I don't think that's exactly what Benny Golson did. In fact, the piano player was doing something entirely different. But when it comes to just piano, because you know, obviously Benny Golson being a saxophone player, that's not conducive to what we're doing here. So as a piano trio, these are the chords that you would wanna play. And again, I think they're pretty good voicings. All right, let's move on into the tune. And the last A section is simply those riffs that we saw at the beginning. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is play the entire arrangement for you. I'm gonna do a little bit of the solo section. We are going to talk about how to solo over this tune in another video. But let me play the tune for you and the arrangement along with the backing track that I created. And when we come back, I'll throw up a link to the backing track and the sheet music so that you can download it and start to practice it for yourself. Okay, let me play that for you now. There you go, it faded into the solo section. I'm not gonna take time to do the whole thing here. What I am gonna do is post a link to the backing track up here in the corner and the sheet music comes with it as well. So go and download that and have some fun with it. If you have any questions about it, you can post them in the comments below. And if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And by the way, when you're checking out the sheet music, check out some of the other sheet music and backing tracks and things that we have over at jazzmental.com. 
Okay, if you want to subscribe to the channel, we'd love to have you. We just reached a couple of thousand subscribers last week, so that's pretty cool. And if you want to be one of them, just click the little bell when you subscribe because you'll be notified of all the upcoming presentations and videos that we're making. Thanks so much for your time. We'll see you in the next video.